And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. We are so excited to welcome Josh Erickson and Don Jones, old Ebenezer Scrooge himself, to our community. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Josh, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Players Guild, you are the artistic director, yes? Yes, correct. And have been for how long? Um, this is my 10th year as the artistic director at Players Guild. Wow. Um, my 19th season in total, but my 10th as artistic director. What did you do those other nine seasons? Well, I started as the assistant to the late uh, Bill Feuder, who was the artistic director at the time, and I worked as a costume assistant, a scenic designer, and anything else that they uh, needed at the time. So it's been, it's been quite a journey. And before that, I'm going to guess what prepared you then to go into uh, this theater as a profession, as, <laughs> as your really full-time paid gig. Well, it started with you know, my parents taking me to see live theater at the, at the Players Guild specifically. But um, then it was off to college where I just, I knew what I wanted to do, which was be a part of that crazy world. Um, and it's just been that kind of from day one. And why do you call it a crazy world? <laughs> because there's nothing like it. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, in a crazy, wonderful way, but it's, mm-hmm. there's just not anything I've experienced that's as exciting or um fulfilling is live theater not too many communities have what we have as yeah. far as something of that caliber can you talk about that a bit wow, well yeah how lucky we are we yeah we really are lucky um not only do we have an amazing facility of course at the at the players guild which is part of the cultural center in downtown canton but we have just amazing talent in stark county and in and outliers but it's it's always humbling for us to to see how many talented individuals come out to be a part of a show. Or um, it's just it's a great group. You know, you're talking Broadway and off Broadway quality, and I'm saying this totally. I mean, I'm not involved. I got no skin in the game. <laughs> sure. I'm just to all, always impressed with oh, what goes you. on there, and and you really are talking about something that would rival any touring company from Broadway or off Broadway going around the country. And we have it right here with people who live in our own hometown. They are volunteers strictly. Does anyone get paid? Well, we did start paying principal actors um, within this this past season. And rightly so. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, we're very excited about that. Yeah, you know, um, in years past, I've been involved in the Players Guild and other capacities um, and uh, on the board and such. And we've gone through um, different phases. But since Josh has come to the helm, things have steadily improved. And he's always... Uh, talked of having the dream of making this a bit more and making it a more professional atmosphere with more professional actors involved in getting to pay the actors, and they're moving in that direction. So could there be anything better, Don, than having a retirement job where you get to do absolutely what you love and have someone pay you to do it? Well, that is exactly right. Um, Well, you know, when I was younger um, and really uh, pursuing um, theater, um, uh, I... uh, when I started getting paid for it, it wasn't fun anymore. Um, it was a job. That's and after, you know, the 72nd to 82nd show, it gets pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but in, in this type of situation, in this uh, environment with that facility and the, and the organization that's there, it is just a pleasure. And the way things are going right now, I mean, the sets are top notch and the, the talent is there, like you said. The organizational uh, stuff is there. It's just a great place to be. And we're talking about, of course, A Christmas Carol, which is a version of The Christmas Carol you won't see anywhere else, right? This is just ours. This music was written just for us. Talk about that a bit. Yeah, absolutely. This was written by um, two local guys, uh, our music director and our conductor, who's also an an amazing composer, Steve Parsons. Yes. uh, Wrote all the music for the show. And John Popa, who actually I went to high school with, um, wrote the lyrics in the book. Um, it's all, of course, based on Charles Dickens' very famous novella, but um, this version of it, which was commissioned, I think, around 1996-97, um, and it, it ran for a short time then, but we brought it back about 10 years ago. But it's, it's an original uh, uh, musical version for our theater. And the music is so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. It, yeah. it really is <clears throat> so cool. So if you think you've seen Christmas Carol, you haven't. Right. Until you see it at the Players it's Guild. It's a beautiful way to tell this story. It's a, it, uh, and, and one of the things that makes me do it year after year, it's a mm. great script, a great score, and it's, it's top-notch. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so 
How long have you been Ebenezer Scrooge, this Don? This is my eighth season last year. <laughs> Josh presented me after a performance for my 100th performance Whoa. of Ebenezer Scrooge. So I'm on to, I don't know, 124 or something now. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And you've been involved in Players Guild beyond this in other capacities, too. Mm-hmm. Um, what led you from there to this? Boy, that's a long story. We don't have time for that. But... Um, uh, my wife got involved there first. She's an actress and uh, has a degree in theater and began teaching acting there about when Josh started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and eventually uh, I had a job at the time that wasn't allowing me to have much free time. But when I got freed up, I wanted to do a show. I, I did uh, Diary of Anne Frank. Oh, wow. I was uh, Mr. Drussel. Oh, wow. <laughs> the dentist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was uh, a pleasure. And uh, I saw what a fantastic fantastic place it was um uh shortly after someone asked me to uh become involved in the board and so i sort of did that for a while um i didn't do much performing uh and then when uh josh hired john tisovich he wanted me to be involved or he kept asking me to audition so i he did and something got heavily involved in the in the performance area of it as well and i staged managed christmas carol on two different occasions as a straight play when we were doing the non-musical version before mm-hmm. I ever did Scrooge. So my history with Christmas Carol has another two seasons involved in it, only they were the guy upstairs calling the shots on yeah. the lights and stuff. So. Well, and that probably helps as far as now you're the lead role or you're in practically every scene. Are you in every scene? No, I get to sit down for a small <laughs> scene. <laughs> okay. That's We're good. Bob Cratchit. <laughs> um, it's called Next Christmas, and he, and he talks with his son amongst the uh, village and uh, – they skip off together, and I get to go sit down and have a little sip of water. Thank goodness. And come back out. Um, it's, in some ways, a lot of times because there are beautiful scenes going on that, that I'm involved with, but I can't take the focus away from. Mm-hmm. So I stand and watch with a spotlight on me. It's like being in line at the grocery store only with a spotlight on you, and your feet start <laughs> to ache a little bit sometimes, and, you know, but I'm out there. But yeah. you also, yeah, that's right, because you're seeing your past and, and present and so forth. Right. But you're in character the whole oh, time. Oh, absolutely, and loving every second of it, yeah. Uh, the, the watching is, is the part I take pride in. <laughs> uh, it's yes. what everyone in the show has to do. Yes. Is to be in character as if the entire audience is watching you, whether the focus is on you or not. Oh, and that's the a pro. story that we've built between the lines of the script with this love story with Bell when he was younger and his heart being ripped out. And it's just beautiful stuff. And you don't need to talk. No, it is. There's it's so much done without speaking and within. It's just beautiful. So. It is really something to see. Um, we're talking again with Josh Erickson and Don Jones, both from the Canton Players Guild, talking about A Christmas Carol. Um how do you do this day in and day out? Because, first of all, there's a lot of people who play Ebenezer Scrooge and it's just nonstop yelling. You take a more subtle approach. He seems like a human being right from the beginning. The best villains are the ones that you can kind of empathize with a little bit. And you do make him a, an empathetic character, even though he's just mean as all get out at the beginning. But in a subtle, really controlled way. I mean, that, it's really, really well, good acting. And you're, and you're talking about so many things that were the goal for the role before I got involved. In other words, many of the things that you said right there were what John and Josh talked to me about before we ever opened up the book. We don't mm. want this guy to be some sort of a character of a mean old miser. Mm-hmm. We want the audience to be able to relate to him and, and for him to be a real person. And we, we try to bring that throughout but um the joy of doing this role i mean it's really fun getting to be terribly mean <laughs> you <laughs> get a lot out of your system you also get to fly you get right. to be you get to bring joy you get to cry yourself you get to make the audience cry oh, yeah. as a role there's just nothing more fulfilling or fun to do you get to do a little piece of what actors love to do best on all spectrums throughout the night it's you, just a blast you get to hit all the notes to every single time i don't know of another role that is such a roller coaster ride of mean and miserly to joyful and the most generous guy in town and all the points in between between one another and yet you put yourself through that well and, i guess that's why you're an actor because you can do that well, the rest but, of us would be exhausted the tough part is is that is that when you cry or when you laugh it requires 
physicality. And yes. when you're done laughing real hard or crying real hard or putting some emotion, you're a bit drained. And even though you're acting, the same thing happens to your body. Yeah, so how does it know the difference? <laughs> I, I have to graciously <laughs> ask my, my beautiful ghost of past to please pick me up off the floor after act two and give me a hug so I can recover a bit <laughs> and go get my costume changed because I'm a mess laying there, you know? I believe that. <laughs> We're all a mess watching it as well. Um, and and let's talk about the relationship that you have with everybody because you know them as people, but yeah, we're seeing a ghost of Christmas past, ghost of Christmas present, which is like a Santa Claus, and then that scary, scary ghost of the future. Oh, well, but you know them as people. How, how talk about the relationship among the cast? Well, first of all, strangely enough, I barely get to look at anyone. Uh, I don't have any interaction except for enclosed dialogue with. Um, Bob Cratchit and with my nephew in the opening scene. Uh, the ghost a lot of times is we're having conversation, but I don't actually interact with her because she's flying about or on a roof or mm -hmm. other things. Um, the first person that I get a lot of interaction with is Christmas present in Act 2. Yes. Um, and uh, Micah Harvey and I have developed a real great rapport. He's a big burly guy. He fills the role fantastically. Yes. He's got a big, powerful voice. And we've developed this wonderful relationship where he grabs me and knocks me around and, and <laughs> throws me about and, and admonishes me. Yeah. And it's wonderful. It, it, if you ever watch Game of Thrones, let me think of it. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, yeah. Arya yeah. and the Hound. Yes. It's kind of like that. They just... They, Kind of hate each other, but there's just a real love and respect there, yeah, too, you yeah. know, so. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about casting, because you've done this eight years. Different members of the cast have to change. Tiny Tim's not going to stay <laughs> tiny two years in a row. Right. So how do you manage to cast this in such a way that they've got the kind of camaraderie that we are seeing from the audience? Well, you know, we have, we have like I said before, one of the, the great joys for us is just the amount of talent, but... Um, we're, we're lucky each year because we have a, a mix of returning faces who kind of bring the, the uh, and like Don, he brings kind of that steadiness to the show, having done the role, knows the role, knows what the show uh, requires, and then introducing new people who've, who may have never been in, in this production before or may have not been in any productions before. Um, for instance, our Tiny Tim this year, as you mentioned, his name's Ezra. He's brand new to us. These mm. kids mm -hmm. are just a dream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's he's just a little professional. I mean, he's he's fantastic, and wow. you know, he he was off book, ready to go, and knew his words and his lines and his music. And most of the kids in the show are like that. It's just they're just the best little kids that yeah. could be found for this. And not only are they great actors, but wow, just, and local. Pros. And yeah. probably have just come to see it with their families and said, man, I'd like to do that someday. I think so. I mean, we put out a casting call, um, and it's an open call, so anyone can come and audition for any show at the Players Guild. And, in, you know, then the director, John uh, Tizovich, who we mentioned, has the very difficult task of, of weaning that number down to, you know, the 34, 35 um, members of the cast that we have on stage now. Um, and that's probably the hardest job for us is – is turning people away at times um, because there are only a certain number of roles and we've right. had you know, 80 to 100 people audition for 35 roles. It's tough. Can people fill in as just uh, wearers of costumes <laughs> to kind of walk around and be in crowd scenes, you know, those extras? <laughs> well, there are parts for everyone. Um, we always say, though, maybe not always openly, but uh, in the office, there, you know, there's no small part. Um, everybody's got to be on point every moment that they're on stage. So everyone's a star in that, right? Saw the most amazing thing was at one of the performances, and I believe the, the fellow who plays Bob Cratchit had some kind of a family emergency or an illness or something, mm -hmm. and John Tisovich stepped right in and played Bob Cratchit. Do you remember the, the performance I'm talking about? Because um, it was amazing. I believe John could probably do that throughout the show. They play anybody? <laughs> <laughs> He's been, Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he did Marley last year under similar circumstances. Wow. It was wow. an adventure for us all. Yeah. And uh, I don't I, I, I haven't heard specifically, but um, there may be an occasion where he might have to step in again this year, but it's not planned, I don't think. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it was amazing and his voice is 
incredible. Yeah. And yeah, it was just um, not to take anything away from Bob Cratchit, no. who well, John, do, John doing it every day. Well, John can probably do my, any role in the show and probably <laughs> top it a little bit. He's got a lot of talent. So. <laughs> it's very talented. It's pretty, pretty good. Um, we're speaking with Josh Erickson, Don Jones. Uh, the Christmas, A uh, Christmas Carol is playing now through when? Through December the 17th. Um, we have performances on Fridays. At 8 p.m., and then we have two performances on Saturdays, Saturdays at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m., and then Sundays at 2 p.m. Okay, and tickets available still for any of those days? Yes, they are. Um, it's it, it, They're going quick. Ba- right. But there are still seats available. Um, you can find them online at our website, playersguildtheater.com, and you can purchase them any time of the day or night, or you can call our box office at 330 453 Seven six one seven. Right, and do you spell theater R E or E R? We spell it R E, the right. only way. That's right. okay, <laughs> <laughs> and that is dot org. Uh, no, it actually, it's dot, dot com. com. Dot okay, com. glad you glad you said that. I wrote it down wrong. Players Guild Theater R E dot com, and uh, we're going to be back after these words. Don't dilly dally though. While we take this break, order your tickets. You're listening to our community.